Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. The first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist or you can ask a general question to any and all of the panelists. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And approximately one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on the same website where you registered for this session. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our first panelist, which will be Mississippi State University. Thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys. All right, well, my name is Hilda Karos. I'm an admissions counselor from Mississippi State University. And this is the middle of our gorgeous campus. It always looks this pretty, grass is always this green. Not even exaggerating, because we do engineer our own grass. So Mississippi State University is located in Starkville, Mississippi, which is Northeast Mississippi, about two hours south of Memphis, two hours west of Birmingham, and those are all major airports. There's also a local regional airport that's about 30 minutes from campus, and we do have a shuttle that runs back and forth for that. So while we are far away, there are plenty of ways to come see us. We'll make it easy for you. We were founded in 1878 as Mississippi A&M, so agricultural and mechanical are very much in our roots, but we've grown tremendously since. We've got 22,000 Bulldogs enrolled, but we have a 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So what that means is that in the classroom, you get that one-on-one -on -one experience with your professors, you get to meet your fellow students, um, you never feel like one of 22,000. But when you step into, say, a football game at Davis Wade Stadium, you look around and you're like, wow, the family's huge. And like I mentioned, you know, we started as agriculture and mechanical, but we've grown tremendously since. We've got about 200 programs to choose from across eight different colleges. Every single one of these colleges has nationally ranked programs within them if a college is not nationally ranked itself. The important thing to know about Mississippi State and, and all of our majors, because it's too many to go into in six minutes, um, is that you are going to get hands-on experiences and hands-on opportunities, no matter what it is that you come to Mississippi State to study. We are ranked top 100 in the country for research, and we are an R1 research institution, so that's the highest level of research that, our, that a college can um, have on their campus. So our students are participating in really, really cool research. What you see right here is actually a picture of our supercomputer. It's the fourth largest or fourth fastest fastest excuse me in academia and we are getting a second supercomputer so just those are some of the things that our students are getting to work with and when you think of research typically your mind goes to like science right but like research for us is a little bit of everything and I think a really really great example of that is the Center for Entrepreneurship and Outreach. And the East Center basically just helps students get businesses started. They're ranked number six in the world for their entrepreneurial research. And they do everything from helping students put together a business plan to helping students find funding for their business. We've actually had students go to the East Center and graduate millionaires. Um, we have a lot of student CEOs. So that opportunity is available for all Bulldogs. You don't even have to strictly be a business student. Some of the other cool research that our uh, undergraduate students are getting to work on um, is like with Boeing and the National Center of Excellence for the FAA on our campus, which is the largest unmanned aircraft lab in the country. In that um, National Center of Excellence, what we have is our students are working with industry leaders to create the playbook, really the rules and laws for drones. So really working with the future there. We have one of the best cybersecurity programs in the country. Students are working directly with the NSA. They're getting that experience and they're getting an NSA certification. Another cool research that's happening on our campus is with the Center for Advanced Vehicular Studies 
Mercedes. They're producing the first all-electric autonomous SUV, so on and off-roading, and a car that drives itself, not just an autopilot like, say, a Tesla. It's tough to talk about the student experience without talking about student life, right? Mississippi State has a lot to offer. We are the most diverse school in the SEC, and we're super proud of it. We've got states from all 50, we've got students from all 50 countries, 50 states, can't talk tonight, and all in uh, 80 different countries, so you'll see a little bit of everything on our campus. We've got hundreds of student organizations, we've got an incredible study abroad program, and we are an SEC school, so that means that there's always some really great and interesting athletics happening on our campus. Our students are super involved, and getting involved is the best way to really find your fit at Mississippi State, um, and if you can't find a club that works for you, it's really easy to start a club with us you need five friends and one staff signature and then you can make your mark on the bulldog family so how do you apply to become a bulldog super simple we are on common app coalition and our direct application whatever is easiest for you use that our application we're going to ask for three things from you we're going to ask for a 40 dollars application fee your high school transcript and test scores if you were able to test if not we'll we're able to go ahead and review your application without it and I know we're out of state and that can be a little expensive, but we've got scholarships to really help offset the cost. We have a veterans waiver. So if mom or dad served in any branch of the military, we'll go ahead and waive the out of state portion of tuition. And um, the average student is getting $14,500 in scholarships from us. So I hope you'll think about Mississippi State and Hale State. Thank you very much, Mississippi State. Um, up next will be the University of Mississippi. Hello, everyone. Just making sure everyone can hear me. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen again. All right. I'm Jamonda Roy. I am the admissions counselor for the University of Mississippi, um, commonly known as Ole Miss. And we are the flagship university. And that just simply means that we're the oldest and the largest university in Mississippi. So I'll just go ahead and jump right into our academic programs, which we have um, over a hundred different majors and programs, pretty much anything that you're wanting to major in, um, we have that for you guys. So we have the top 25 school of pharmacy, excuse me, the top 10 accounting program. Um, and we have a pretty cool internship for our accounting students that they will have at the end of their senior year. And we've had students who've interned in Boston, New Orleans, um, Houston, um, Atlanta, pretty much wherever you wanna go, we have an internship for you. We have the School of Journalism and New Media. We have alums that are working with Disney, TikTok, CNN, um, students who are writing for late night comedy shows, um, so our alums are very diverse from this program. If you don't know what you want to major in, that is totally fine. Um, you have up to your sophomore year to declare declare a major. And while you're undeclared, you will be considered a general studies or freshman studies major. Um, so that's totally fine if you don't know um, what you want to major in. We also have the College of Liberal Arts, and I am a, an alum, a three-time alum of this college. And these, um, this college is our uh, humanities um, and all of your ologies. You have pretty much from African-American studies to history to psychology, sociology, um, pretty much anything that you want to major in, most of them are going to be right here in the College of Liberal Arts. And we also have wonderful professors that are right here in this college um, teaching. We have a lot of professors who are um, um, authors. Um, we have K.S.A. Lehman, who's written for Vanity Fair, Brian Foster, um, a lot of great uh, professors right here in this uh, college. 
We also have the School of Business Administration. We have the School of Applied Sciences, and these are our change makers. So if you wanted to go into like criminal justice or social work, um, this is the school for you. We have a School of Education. We have a really cool um, system that's called Teach Live. So if you're wanting to go into the field of education, you're not just jumping into it cold turkey. You will be required to do um, school observations um, and Teach Live is pretty much an experience where um, you will be you you will be given that experience of students um, what it will be like to have students in the classroom and so that's um, we are the only school um, that pretty much has that program. We also have the School of Engineering, um, a lot of different um, opportunities here um, in this program. Um, here you can see one of our students created something and our engineering students will never be sitting down in class. They're always hands-on. And so you'll see a lot of that around campus. Um, we also have pre-professional areas. So if students are wanting to go into pre-med, um, pre-dental, pre-law, we have the state's only health professions advising office. Um, and our advisors are amazing. And they will help you in the path to get you to law school, medical school, nursing school, whatever you desire. We also have special programs, um, such as our Sally McDonald Barksdale's Honors College. We have the Trent Lott Leadership Institute. Uh, one of my faves is the Mississippi Excellence Teaching Program, um, as well as early entry for pharmacy. Um, so we have a lot to offer our students. Also don't wanna leave out CME, the Center for Manufacturing Excellence. Um, we had a student who was in this program a few years ago and she interned with Tesla her sophomore year and um, they paid her $100,000 as a sophomore. And when she graduated, um, she was hired with Tesla. So a, a lot of amazing internship opportunities right here on our campus. Of course, as a student, you want to be involved in student life. So we have over 400, made, uh, 400 different organizations for our students to get involved in, whether it's SAA, ASB, Black Student Union, um, or any of our Greek organizations, which we have, uh, which our students pretty much over 60% of our student population are Greek, but so many wonderful traditions um, and organizations so that you can get involved here. Of course, we have campus resources. We want to make sure our students are um, protected and they're supported while, they, while they're here on campus. We have a brand new uh, recreational facility, a new rock climbing wall. I tried to do it, couldn't do it. Maybe some of our uh, future students can try to do it. Uh, we have free transportation for our students. If you need to get anywhere around Oxford um, and around the campus, you are welcome to just, all you have to do is show your student ID and then you can get on for free. If students we have uh, out of town, you're wanting to fly back home, um, we will offer um, a service uh, to you, uh, for you uh, to the our Memphis airport, which is about 55 miles away um, for a small fee. Um, so we have a lot, of course, a lot of dining services, um, student disability services, and the health and career center for you guys. We are located in the beautiful town of Oxford, um, just home to not, not many residents, but it is growing, of course, with our students. Um, we have our famous square books. Again, like I said, we have professors who are um, nationally known authors. We have a lot of authors come and do book signings. Um, so we have a lot to offer for you guys right here in the city of Oxford, of course, music and arts as well. And I'll just skip over to our scholarships, which we have, and I can give you more information about that as well. So what I need you guys to do is just submit an application and that opens um, in July, um, also in August. Um, and we'll just need your transcript. Uh, so we are super scoring this year. Um, and But if you guys choose not to submit your scores, that is totally fine. Just feel free to contact me anytime you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, University, University of Mississippi. Um, up next, we will move to Alaska with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a regional admissions counselor at University of Alaska Fairbanks. I'm actually based in Southern California to better work with students like you in California and Las Vegas, or uh, sorry, Nevada. Some of you might be in Vegas. Uh, but uh, I actually am a UAF alum. I graduated 
uh, from the UAF with my master's. I lived on campus for a year. I lived off campus in a dry cabin without running water for a year. And uh, I'd love to talk with you about moving to Alaska from out of state because I'm originally from Ohio. So if you have any questions like that at all, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me. So UAF, uh, we are a small to mid-sized public research university based in Alaska's interior, up here towards uh, the heart of Alaska. Now, some of you may be not too familiar with the state, uh, but uh, the way you get up to Alaska, Fairbanks specifically, you'll probably hop on uh, a plane at your nearest airport that'll take you to Seattle, Washington, and then you'll take another flight from Seattle into Fairbanks. We do have an international airport that's about a five minute drive from campus, just a couple miles away, very accessible, a little bit longer of a journey, but we like to think it's worth it. If you aren't able to visit our campus right now, I highly recommend taking a virtual tour of our campus. We also have an audio tour on Spotify if you just wanna listen and learn a little bit about UAF. By being up here in Alaska's interior, you're gonna be experiencing a particularly unique uh, living environment uh, with uh, snowy winters, temperature lows of negative 40, sometimes negative 50, but don't worry, in the summer, it sneaks right back up to the 70s, even the 80s when the midnight sun returns. And uh, before you have to ask, yes, you will be able to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, right from campus. Uh, and you might also be able to see a couple moose on campus. Uh, I've done both those things, uh, can't recommend them enough. I like to tell students that you're gonna get all the best parts of college at UAF. Uh, you know, everything that you're looking for, but we're in the farthest north US city. So it's gonna have a little bit of a Northern twist. So here's what the sun looks like on the winter solstice in December. Here's what your backyard's gonna look like. Uh, you know, long country roads, black spruce trees. You can even see the Alaska pipeline right there. And then our student tradition on campus is snapping a photo in front of the negative 40 uh, temperature sign when the temperature gets uh, right down there below negative 40. And uh, if you're as brave as these students, then maybe you'll strip down to your swimsuits. Uh, but if you are a chicken like me, then you will remain fully clothed because that is just truly wild. And just some highlights about UAF. We are Alaska's flagship university. We're a Lancey and Space Grant University. We're also a world leader in climate change and Arctic research. There is no better place in the world to study climate change and the Arctic than in Alaska. Uh, we are a relatively small camp campus, around 5,400 students. On our campus, the city of Fairbanks itself is about 100,000 people. And we do have that pretty small student to professor ratio that some of my colleagues have highlighted at their schools too. Uh, here at UAF, you're gonna have, you know, those really small tightly knit class communities. You're gonna know your professors, you're gonna know your classmates and recognize based on campus. You'll even see those people at the grocery store because we do have kind of a small town vibe to us. We offer degrees online through our e-campus at the in-state tuition rate. We also offer Wubi for All, and I'll get into that more here in a little bit. We also offer in-state tuition for military and veterans and their families, and we have excellent Thai food in Fairbanks. Student life is very active, very diverse, has a lot of great things going on. We're not quite a party school, but we are a very social school. So whether it's residence life, uh, hosting a movie night, or if it's uh, the physics department hosting a stargazing night outside of the Reichardt building uh, on our campus, you're gonna have something to do, especially during the winter. And we'll get you out during those, uh, su during those sunshine hours in the winter too. We have 25 miles of hiking trails right on campus. Uh, we're really active. And uh, if you don't see something that you uh, are looking for on campus, you can always just start your own student club too. You'll have, uh, you'll have a number of different pathways available to you at UAF, whether you're looking for just an endorsement or a certificate uh, or an associates. We actually have a community and technical college built into UAF. Uh, we also offer the more traditional four-year program, the bachelor's program, and you can see come, some of our more popular and unique majors listed here. I always like to emphasize to students, though, you're going to be getting more of a degree, more than just a degree with UAF. If you move up to Fairbanks, Alaska, just 200 miles south of the Arctic Circle, uh, you're going to have stories, you're going to have uh, inspiration, you're going to have memories that people are going to be interested by. So at that job interview, you're really, really going to stand out. You didn't just get a college degree, you graduated from University of Alaska Fairbanks, you lived in Fairbanks. Uh, like I said, we are a public research university. Our STEM majors are very popular because they do incorporate unique research and internship opportunities up in Alaska and in the Arctic. Uh, we are the only university in the world to have our own ro private rocket launch site, Poker Flat Research Range. If you're a mechanical engineer or an aerospace engineering minor, uh, then you'll actually get to work. Uh, you might actually get to work on Poker Flat Research Range. And uh, we also have a large animal research station, which is home to a number of musk oxen and reindeer. If you're interested in, in becoming a pre-vet or a wildlife biology major, if you want to become uh, a game warden or a park ranger, we have a number of opportunities for you at UAF. 
We also have opportunities for uh, students who are interested in becoming firefighters, getting experience in the field as a firefighter while you complete your degree, uh, especially students from California. This is hard to come by. So we have really unique and uh, impressive opportunities for you up at UAF. We also have an honors in college and a climate scholars program, both of which offer uh, scholarships to our students. Uh, we have study away programs, both international and national within the United States. Like I said, we do offer WUI for all. This is the number right here, just over 23,000. That's tuition and fees, housing, meal plan, everything. Uh, so just make sure to check yes on your application if you are coming from a WUI state, from California, Nevada, wherever it may be. And uh, we do offer scholarships. You're going to be automatically considered for two different scholarships upon being admitted to UAF, the Nano Pledge and Nano Commitment Scholarships. And our applications are still open for fall 2021. If you apply by June 15th, you will be considered for those scholarships. We're waiving test scores and application for fall 2022 opens on June 16th. And like I said, my name is Andrew. I'm a UAF alum and out of state student. Thank you so much for listening today. And please follow us on Instagram and uh, yeah, send me an email. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, University of Alaska Fairbanks. As we move into the second half of our presentation, just a reminder to any of our attendees, if you have questions for any of our panelists, please do feel free to utilize that Q&A button. But up next is Alaska Pacific University. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, let me go ahead and pull this up. All right, well, good afternoon or evening, everyone. My name is Campbell Cry. I am an admissions counselor at We seem to have lost your volume there. Try uh, muting yourself and unmuting yourself. No, we still aren't able to hear you. Um, what I might suggest, and we do have time, um, we can move you down a slot, maybe log out and then log back in and, and test your audio when you do that, okay? All right, good. Um, so we're going to move ahead to Alaska Pacific, uh, excuse me, uh, University of Alaska Anchorage. Hi, y'all. My name is Fernando. I'm the Assistant Director for Student Recruitment at UAA. Let me share my screen. All righty. So, um, so University of Alaska Anchorage, like the name suggests, we are located in Anchorage, Alaska. You've already heard from another Alaska school already. Um, you actually saw us on the map there as well, but Anchorage is the largest city in the state of Alaska. You can see us in the uh, little box down there, um, nice kind of port city, approximately 300,000 people. We really like to kind of think of Anchorage as we, we call it kind of an urban wild campus um, because you have all, you know, the amenities of a large city, um, but you still have kind of that very accessible, more like the wilderness, uh, really close by. Like I know, for example, right from campus, uh, actually, if you look in the previous picture, the mountains are right there. Um, so you don't have to go far to really experience a lot of, like the wildlife um, and a lot of like trails, um, like you have over a hundred miles of trails um, right on like close to campus. So you have a lot of opportunities for those sorts of outdoor activities uh, or, uh, you know, other outdoor adventures. Uh, we have nearly 12,000 students on campus who are kind of a mid-sized institution. Uh, so it still gives us about a 16 to one student faculty ratio. So you still can expect some fairly small class sizes, especially once you get into your major and you know, out of the you know, prereq courses, uh, you can really start seeing some fairly small, you know, 20 or less students um, inside a class. Um, we were also ranked number one return on long-term investment among our peer institutions. So you are really getting a lot out of your UAA degree after graduation. We're really great at making sure our students are finding jobs after graduation. When it comes to finding a place, a place to belong, you also have a lot of opportunities to kind of join different organizations. We have over a hundred student clubs. We have a Greek life on campus. Um, so you have really a lot of unique ways to get involved. We especially just recently started 
um, a uh, an esports club. Um, and actually, you have really top of the line uh, computers, like really cutting edge stuff. It looks really cool. Definitely recommend checking out our website and seeing those. Um, but along with that, we have a really active student government, uh, the US UAA Student Government Association, um, that has really a great voice on campus and you know getting things done, getting things changed, um, so that our students can you know have a, a better four years of their life. Um, along with that, we did Division One and Two sports on campus, so you do have um, also really great ways to be active, whether you are an athlete or whether you'd like to maybe just do intramurals as well. Uh, we do also have intramurals for those who are just more into it for the fun of it as well. Uh, also, an internationally ranked debate team. Um, so that's another great way, you know, practice speaking in front of people and um, getting to, um, yeah, get, getting to know your voice, I would say, getting to understand your voice. When it comes to academics and undergraduate research, we do have a lot of options. It's just a general areas of active interest. This isn't all our majors. Uh, we offer um, certificates, associates, bachelors, masters, PhD programs. You could stay with us in, throughout your entire academic journey. So you do certainly have a lot of options there, but just to kind of highlight a couple um, programs I and mean, all our programs I think are great, uh, but just to highlight a couple standouts in my opinion, things like business. Um, we're really great at making sure that you're not just learning about things, you know, in books, but actually getting out there and experiencing it, whether it is through internships, whether it is through getting, you know, industry leaders, uh, say, for example, for if you're interested in real estate or starting a real estate business, we partner with uh, Widener, which is a very large um, set of like real estate and property management uh, organization here. Um, and we actually, they have the Widener Center in one of our buildings and they come and speak to our students and kind of share their wisdom and their experience uh, along with Know, typically also some internship opportunities for those students or say health science professionals we have hospital like right across the street so you have a lot of really great access to uh, those sorts of experiences those sorts of internships and experiences that can really help set you apart whenever you're going on to um, kind of that next level to that job and then finally industry and technical education we have a really great professional piloting program we're actually ranked uh, number eight in the nation in professional piloting so i was super happy to see that ranking um, as well as things like air traffic control, which are super high paying jobs as well. When it comes to cost and affordability, um, I just put the movie tuition on the left. So most of y'all will qualify for movie tuition, I assume, since it's um, a whack hack fair. Um, all students admitted from movie state to automatically qualify for movie tuition. Um, so it is a discounted tuition. Uh, it's about 9,900, so just under $10,000 uh, with books and supplies and room and board, it's about $23,000 a year. Uh, there's no additional uh, application or GPA requirement for WUI. Um, also in-state tuition for both military families, or sorry, military and their families, about 17% of our um, undergraduate population is uh, affiliated with the military in some way, whether that be active duty, reserves, dependents, and so on. Along with that, we have some really great ways to also get out of Alaska, well, both study abroad programs, which in a typical year they'd be operating, but this isn't quite a typical year. Uh, they get you all over the world, as well as studying away with National Student Exchange, where you can, you can actually have a semester at another institution all over the US and even in some of the territories like Guam and Puerto Rico, which is a really cool experience as well. And then finally, just discover UAA. We have you can either set up a visit, uh, a virtual tour. We have a fully online virtual tour you can check out. Um, and if you apply, there is no application fee, so it's really easy to do on our website. And if you have any questions, you can certainly feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be there to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, University of Alaska Anchorage. Um, now we're going to go back to uh, Alaska Pacific University. All right, let's try this again. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Perfect. Okay. All right, round two. Let's see if I can pull this up. Okay. Well, hello everyone again. Um, good evening, my name is Campbell Cry. I am one of the admission counselors here at Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage, Alaska, and I'm excited to share with you all a little bit more about the university. You've gotten uh, a little bit of a, well, actually a pretty good taste of Alaska and some of the different areas and different schools 
um, from the other two schools that have shared, but um, Alaska Pacific University you'll find is a little bit um, different than the other two schools. So let's get started. So a little bit of history. We once were um, called Alaska Methodist University in 1960 and then grew since then and added a ton of programs and became Alaska Pacific University in 1978, um, opening up uh, just a wide array of classes and programs. We are committed to the heritage of Alaska Native education and recently um, have transitioned into becoming a tribal university. We offer rigorous academics um, and outdoor experiences. I'll talk a little bit more about the hands-on experience you'll get. And then we also have a second campus called Kellogg Farms, which is in Palmer, Alaska, which is about um, an hour away from Anchorage. And this is a 900 acre space that a lot of our students will use within our sustainability program, our outdoor studies, and um, a lot of different of the program areas. We have about 529 students on campus. This is including our undergraduate and graduate students. So it's a really small campus, a very tight-knit community. You'll get to know students and peers really well. The class sizes are about 18 to 20 students, and even smaller once you get into your program, um, more on the lines of anywhere from maybe 8 to 15 students. It's an 8 to 1 student to professor ratio. So again, you're just getting the attention you need, the hands-on experience, the connections as far as getting plugged into the community in Anchorage, getting internship opportunities. Um, we have about 78% of our students that are coming from within the state of Alaska. However, we are, how I would kind of describe it, is a little bit of a melting pot in the sense that we have students that are also from 31 other states and countries coming from all over. And you will feel at home getting to know students that are from your area as well, no matter where you're coming from. We have three on-campus housing options, a traditional dorm style, um, an apartment style, and then a, kind of a housing duplex style. And then I mentioned that last piece that we are a Native American Indian serving campus. There's a lot of history um, surrounding with the Native tribal culture in Alaska, and we want to um, exemplify that and uh, welcome that. Life in Alaska, so you've gotten to hear a little bit of what, if it, what it's like to live in Alaska. Obviously, the, breath, the views are amazing. This is a picture right from one of the dorms on campus. Um, you'll see moose on campus. You are kind of in the heart of Anchorage, but you get this small town feel because you're far enough back where we're in a wooded area. You get um, kind of the peace and quiet, but you're close enough to the airport. You're about five minutes from the airport. There's a city bus right down the hill from campus that gets you around campus um, or around town for free as a student. Um, there's adventure all around. There's a lot of hiking. The Our campus life will put on a lot of activities on as far as doing hikes around campus, taking you to some of the smaller fishing towns surrounding Anchorage. Um, we also have a lot of rich history. So we display a lot of artwork on campus. We have different classes on campus as far as um, traditional um, classes. We've had a traditional kayak building class on campus. They'll do different native um, events, a lot of things to just immerse you in Alaska and our history. A lot of wildlife on campus and we are in a quiet tucked back um, part of Anchorage. I should mention too, you probably heard this, but Anchorage is the largest city with about 300,000 student or 300,000 people in the community. Um, and the state of Alaska only has about 700,000 to 800,000 people within the state. So gives you an idea of um, what Anchorage is like, um, but also that it's not a, um, not a city feel in the sense of what maybe some of you are used to with a city. And we are a place-based experiential learning campus where you'll get a lot of hands-on experience. We have a huge focus on students and community. And we have 12 undergraduate programs, which I will talk about in the next slide. We keep things relevant to Alaska. So any, everything from the climate, uh, um, the ecosystems that you will be surrounded with, and the history in the state, and you'll get a lot of support and respect from the um, different services we have on campus, the faculty and the staff. Um, there's a tutoring center, a writing center, and just a lot of other um, accommodations as far as that, wanting, making sure that you um, have the best experience and education at APU. These are some of our programs. I won't talk about all of them. Some of our bigger programs are our nursing program, 
Um, we do have a full simulation lab on campus um, for our nursing students. Um, we have a our counseling psychology program, which leads into uh, all the way up to a doctor doctorate program. Um, another big one is our marine environmental sciences program. There's a lot of really cool and unique concentrations within that. And then another one is our outdoor st studies, which really gets you out into Alaska. Um, if you're wanting to do tourism and a lot of those types of jobs, you'll, that's a good fit for you. Um, I'm going to skip over this just for time's sake, just so I can get to the other things. But um, campus life is a big piece of campus. You'll get to learn. Um, just grow and be a part of the community. Um, as far as admissions, you'll submit the application. is $25. However, we do offer fee waivers. You'll submit your official transcript. We look for at least a 2.5 or higher GPA, um, but we do have an appeal process. You'll get to be in touch with us. Um, we have on-campus visits right now, and we have a tour online as well on our website. Um, there's a lot of financial aid, so we offer out-of-state discounts, so $1,000 for out-of-state students. The FAFSA is available. We have a donor-funded scholarship application that you can fill out, um, and a lot of merit-based um, options for you as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Alaska Pacific. Um, and our final presenter uh, this evening is Soka University of America. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy King. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at SOCA, and it was so great learning about my um, peer uh, institutions. I definitely want to go to Mississippi someday. I've been to Alaska, and it truly is beautiful, so thank you all so much. Um, SOCA University, we are a private uh, four-year liberal arts university. We're located in Southern California. We are in the city of Aliso Viejo. Oh, sorry, let me... We are a mission-driven university, and that mission is to foster a steady stream of global citizens that are truly committed to living a contributive life. A couple of things that are unique about SOCA, uh, we're very small compared to my peer institutions that just presented. We only have 450 students total, and we have 40% that are actually international from over 40 different countries, and that is intentional. Again, in trying to become a global you know, citizen, we really believe in the importance of learning from different perspectives. Um, we do have a bachelor, bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts with five concentrations. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Another thing that is unique about SOCA, we actually have a mandatory study abroad requirement. So every single student that attends SOCA will be doing study abroad during the junior year. And the great thing, it's already built in our cost of attendance. Also during the senior year, every single student will do a capstone research project. Also very small is on many of our other institutions, seven to one student faculty ratio and the average classroom size of 12. And we are part of the NAIA as far as athletics. And I'll talk a little bit more about merit-based and need-based financial aid as well. As far as um, general education, again, we do things slightly differently. The majority of the universities in the United States teach from just a Western perspective. But SOCA tries to take, again, more of a global view. So we try to teach from both a Western and an Eastern perspective in most of our classes. As I mentioned, um, every single student will do study abroad. You have four languages to choose from, either Spanish, Japanese, French, and Chinese. And the great thing, it's already built in the cost of attendance. So it's not a separate cost to you or your family and you still graduate within four years. You have the choice of either going to university and studying or even doing an internship while you're you know, in that country. As far as academics, again, slightly different than most universities, we actually have concentration. So again, you'll get a bachelor's degree in liberal arts with the focus of one of these five concentrations. So either environmental studies, humanities, life sciences, international studies or social and behavioral sciences. And as you can see, within each concentration are housed many different topics that you could study from. The great thing is that when you come into SOCA, you actually don't have to declare which concentration you're gonna focus on until your junior year. So you're actually able to take courses and you know, environmental studies or international studies, life sciences, whatever it may be. We realize students have many different interests. So we don't want you to have to just declare right away. We want you to have the opportunity to kind of explore while you're in college. As far as success, we actually have a very strong um, high success rate of students going to some of the top grad schools around the country and even around the world. You know, many of our students have been accepted to a lot of the Ivy Leagues or places like Stanford, Berkeley, you know, Duke Law. Even, and, and as far as places of employment, we have students that are working in almost every sector that you could think of, even, you know, um, medicine, law, business, education. We even have one of our alumni who owns his own robotics company in Japan even though we don't have any robotics classes here at SOCA. So you could go in almost any direction. Again, because we're really trying to focus on your critical thinking skills, your communication skills and problem solving skills. 
Also very active, you know, campus community. Again, even though we only have 450 students total, we have many things for students to participate in, like whether it's a bridges to business, on, entrepreneurship program, on-campus jobs. You know, we have our um, career services department that really works with you getting local internships. And also during the summertime, we encourage you to do internships and those are paid internships that we're trying to help you get as well. Also um, model UN program, every single year they go to you know, New York and they spend time there. Um, again, we're located very close to Laguna Beach, Dana Point area. So we have world-class beaches that you could attend. Our performing arts center where students get to attend um, different types of concerts and hear you know, world-class speakers. And many times that's free for the students to attend as well. Also over 30 different campus clubs, ranging from community-based service clubs, performing clubs, cultural clubs, literary magazine, a student government. You know, we also have intramural sports, a lot of activities for students participating as well. Also, um, if you do play athletics, we are part of the NAIA. So we do offer some athletic scholarship, but it won't be a full ride as if you went to a you know, division one school. We do have men's and women's soccer, track and field, cross country, women's golf and swim as well. Um, as far as admissions, we are part of the Common Application, so you can either apply through Common App or our online application. The fee is $30. Uh, we do accept fee waiver. Um, deadline for early action is November 1st. Regular decision is January 15th. Um, some of you might actually be international students that are studying in the States right now, so if you are an international student, uh, we do require English proficiency if you've only been here uh, two years or less. Also, two letters of academic recommendation. Um, there's two essays and then a list of extracurricular activities. We are test optional because of COVID, so we don't require the test. If you wanna submit it, that's fine, but it's not required. A total cost of attendance. So whether you're a um, you know, domestic student, in-state student in California, out of state, you know, um, international, undocumented, the, the cost is gonna be the same for every single student. So the total cost is about 45,000 a year. So the breakdown is about 32,000 for tuition, 13,000 for room and board. Um, the great thing at SOCA is we actually offer financially to all students. It doesn't matter, you know, again, if you're international or domestic, we're going to offer great financial aid. So we have the SOCA Opportunity Grant, which is based upon family income. If a, fam if a student's making 60000 or under combined income, I should say their family, will actually pay 100% of the tuition portion. So 100% of tuition will be covered. If your family makes more, we just adjust that and we'll cover that as well. We also offer, um, you know, merit-based scholarships based on your academics. Um, also, you know, federal SOCA loan, federal and state funding. And actually last year we gave out close to 14 million um, to our students. That's just in in-house funding. So that doesn't include like, you know, Pell Grants or anything else. So that comes out to almost like 31,000 per student. So we did quite a good job in regards to really trying to support our students in that regard. Um, this is our team, myself. So if you would like to email me if you want more information. Um, and then Chelsea, Ashley, Aaron. And then if you are an international student, I would uh, definitely get Margaret and Astrid's information as well. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Soka University. Um, and thank you to all of our panelists this evening for your great presentations. It's very hard to uh, present about your institutions in six minutes, um, but it was a great evening, I think. A very interesting mix of institutions and we certainly thank you for your time. Uh, for all of our attendees, uh, we certainly hope that you uh, got a little bit of out of this uh, session and that you'll follow up with these institutions to learn more about majors, et cetera. Um, but that does bring us to the end of our session for this evening. Uh, so we do, of course, want to thank everybody for joining us. And we do have a very, uh, a few very quick housekeeping items to go over before we do end the session. When you do close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. And again, about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again to everybody um, and to all of our college students. Good luck in your college search. Have a great evening.